All right. So it looks like you've already got some notes. That was quick. Uh, when I looked at this before, there wasn't any notes. <laughs> but it looks like someone's left some. What do we got here? Michael E. All right. So let me just turn the music off. It's like an acting piece. In fact, I know it is an acting piece. And uh, yeah, let's just have a look. Turn the volume up. Okay. So you know what I just heard? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you know what I just heard? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so like, um, same thing as last time when I looked at an acting, or I can't remember if it was an acting piece. No, it was a, it was a body mechanics piece. And um, the person who submitted their work had, you know, no shadows, no ambient occlusion. There's like all of these steppies along the sides, these like little bad boys that, um, that I reckon are pretty easy. Like these are things that are just like super easy to fix up that make the viewing experience just a little bit nicer. Um, and same thing with the film gate. I see that you've got it turned on here and it's like at a fine resolution or whatever, but one thing that you can do in Maya, which I'll open up real quick and just, you know, demo this is just make it black. Cause if there's a moment in here, there's not. Oh, actually, no, there is down here, these legs. You can see through the film gate. And it's like, are we supposed to be seeing these legs? You know, like, why why are we seeing these legs? And I think just having the film gate as, like, full black makes it so that we're not confusing the audience at all about what they should and shouldn't be seeing. So, like, what you do... Here's how I would do it. If you've got some objects in your scene... And you can see like there's like it's kind of hard to see because of my renderer but yeah these like steppies these little edges let me see if i can have a better look over here yeah see across the top of this cylinder there's like little stepping and same thing over here on this yeah it's pretty it's pretty clear to see on these straight lines just how how ugly these lines are press this button and they go away at least they mostly go away you press this button and anything that's on a floor plane gets, um, or anything that's close to anything else gets a little bit of free ambient occlusion, which like sometimes it looks a little bit gross. Like if the geo on the face isn't quite right, then it looks, it tends to look a little bit strange, but, um, yeah, for the most part, it like just adds just that little bit of extra groundedness to the shots. And then finally, what I like to do is, uh, just turn on some lighting. So what I do is I create a point light, or sorry, a directional light and a point light. And I just turn down the um, intensity on the point light. And I also turn it down on the directional light just a bit. And then you just push seven and you get shadows. Turn on shadows with this button up here. Um, and then you just get some free shadows. And all of these things combined just like help bump up the quality of the shot just a, just a tiny little bit. It like doesn't cost you anything, you know, like I did this in like under a minute. You can also change the shadow color. Um, if you don't like the harsh black shadows, you can mess around with some settings in here. Like I think the default ones are just the ray trace ones. But if you want to go in here and fiddle with some depth map shadows and, you know, get the resolution up there, you can probably get some, some like nicer looking things going on. Um, but yeah, no, normally I just, I just use the regular ray trace shadows by default and you're all, uh, you're all good to go. So yeah, just, just those few things are like little primo little tips just to like help you not have an ugly scene. <laughs> um, and it looks like you've got a really nice note here to start with this like camera composition thing. They're saying, you know, we want to get in a little bit closer here. Oh yeah, the film gate. So you've got, um, you've got your scene. And like oftentimes what people do is they'll just press this button so that we get an indication of like where the edge of the frame is. And like you've got this like stuff on the outside here and this is maybe this is like just a bit of a personal pet peeve thing but i really dislike being able to see things outside the desired frame of the shot because if we can see them then what's the point of the shot like why why are we here having a why have we framed it up if we can still still see still see things um you know maybe there's a counter argument against that it's like oh you know maybe if we could see underneath here then the director or you know person giving critiques could say oh bring this little feature out but shouldn't uh, if, if it's out of the frame then it's out of the frame that's kind of the way i look at it so anyway you've got you select your camera 
head uh, into the attribute editor, you go to display options, turn the gate mask color to black and the gate mask opacity to one and you're uh, good to go. And then you can have your gate mask and you can get like the exact framing on the shot. So, you know, this is what you see. It's not like affected by like, you know, the size of the window. It's just perfectly the frame, the end frame. Um, but you don't have to worry about so much about um, stuff being seen that you don't want to be seen. But yeah, there's that. Um, okay, so now to look at the animation. Okay, you know what I just heard? Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you know what I... So I like how you've got like a little bit of like a sense of progress. Hey, it's Veronica popping in for a minute. Welcome, welcome. We're just taking a look at some stuff from the feedback channel real quick. Feel free to jump in if you see something. So what I see here blah, 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 is like some nice progression. Blah, blah, blah. You like start small and then we like build up. There's like some broad motions in here and some like interesting facial expressions. I see you mentioned somewhere in here saying that um, right now I didn't focus on the face expressions, just did corrections and changes on the body movement. So maybe like you've got some blocking in here for the face. I think it's still worth talking about just a little bit. Um, okay, you know what? Okay, you know what I just heard? Blah, 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 blah. So the first thing is there's like a bit of an eye line thing. It's like here we can see she's like clearly looking at the pad, right? Like this is good. This is clear. Very nice. And then we go over here. We, you know, acknowledge that the person is off over in this direction somewhere, right? And then we lose them a little bit right here. Then they sort of feel like they're over here now. And then they're back here. This is fine. We're doing like an eye roll. I, I, so people have opinions about eye rolls. I don't mind them too much. I do think they're a bit cliche, but um, it's probably okay in this situation. And then here, the eyes feel a little bit like one's going in one direction and the other one's going in the other direction a little bit, you know, like down here and over here is kind of the vibe. And then same thing here. We're now like looking down. So like what I, what I would do to sort of address this is just like have your two points of interest, you know, like you've got the pad, this is the thing that's most interesting at the start of the shot in terms of like value if we talk about like things that have value and change value throughout the piece the acting piece then the second thing that she focuses on is over here you know like that initial point which i think is good right here she has a little bit of like a stunned look right here i know we're not looking at the face specifically but just getting like just a little little bit of relaxed uh relaxation in the face really help you out um, yeah so just having the two points you know the, the little book and the person and we don't have to worry about you know any of these other positions so much as you have solid eyeline you can always layer in some darts later to make it a bit fancy yeah yeah like there's the, the the eyes will dart totally yeah but just like having like a base layer in there totally yeah that's what you're saying um, and then in the body, I think it feels okay here. Like you've got like this nice lean going on. You can feel like a sense of weight heading over this way a little bit. She's like leaning on her hip, which I quite like. Um, this feels like a relatable kind of like waiter pose. Um, and then we go into like this, and this feels a little bit like square to me. There's something that's like very just like front on, straight down the line. You know, like even though the hands are in different positions, I feel as though the weight has like started shifting here, but it hasn't finished shifting. You know, like we're like holding here for a really long time. Okay, you know what I just heard? Okay, you know what I just heard? And I get that she like gets there, like over here, but even here, it still feels like quite square, quite front on. When you look at this, there's this nice twist in this hip, and the chest is sort of like tilted down, like this way. So you've got like you know, nice things twisting around. But then over here, I feel like we sort of just lose it a little bit. There's just still quite front, front facing. There's a little bit of torso angle here, but I feel like it would be more powerful to be like, blah, blah, blah. And you know, she like overdoes it and like hits that angle quite hard. Um, 
Ah, oh, thank you for the pasta check. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're deep in shrimp mode today. Low key for yourself? Yeah, I get you, I get you. Um, and then she sort of just stays here, you know, like... The hip feels like trans translationally, it's just like totally still at fr from here kind of all the way through until the last few frames when she shifts forward again. So it's like, it's nice that we're like getting back here, even though like I feel like we want to close some of the silhouette up and like have like a less square posture, you know, like dip this shoulder down, have this shoulder up a little bit higher, have this hip come out, close out this little gap a little bit. Potentially. Um, but yeah, once we hit this point, there's just, there's only rotations. It's sort of like the equivalent of like standing up. Hang on, I need to see myself for this. Standing up, and then you just like act within just this realm. It feels like you're like an animatronic, you know? There's no like, we've established that she can translate and that she can move, but we're just like now stuck. I think some of these poses through here need some defining like as you go to spline this you'll feel like things just kind of like move through the space like I can get, I get that sense already that there's not enough like definition in especially this moment right here blah 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 this feels just like uh just so open you know like we need like some something happening in the wrist blah 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 and then like you know she's like holding a pose and maybe there's like some you know small emotion that's happening in the hand and maybe in the head as it like tilts down blah 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 and then you can like get into the next pose uh, blah 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 but there needs to be something more here as well you know this this i mean these fingers obviously aren't polished yet but the head feels a little bit detached from the body here and we're just so front on and even the spine feels just a little bit broken the way we're twisting this hip feels like an unnatural kind of twist. Um, sorry about the slightly scattershot sounding notes, but yeah, I just feel like we get ourselves into some trouble in here. And then we return back. And maybe it's this line that's sort of doing it a little bit for me. This, these braces feel a little bit like they're hard to, hard to pass. And then I'll, I'll say as well, once you hit spline, you'll probably notice some like really quick feeling or like slow feeling moments here through the head, right? So you've got like some nice held pose stuff here. We get into this, this is fine. And then like all of a sudden it's gonna feel like the head just like, whoa, like shoots around really fast um, when you go into spline. And so one thing that you probably wanna do is like start splining soon. Um, I know there's like this temptation to this like spend a long time in blocking and just like get blocking plus and just like get get deep in there with like the step keys and stuff but uh I, i'm going to encourage you to just like just jump in and just see what spots what spline looks like now <laughs> just to get like even if you don't stay there for very long just to give you like a sense of like oh this is actually too slow here or like this is going to be way too fast here so and then finally um this, this last pose, I like what you're doing here with this emphasized on the last blah, but I would push this. Not very often that I say you should push something in acting piece, but I would say we really want to like, you know, these hands are going to come up, blah, blah. She's like, you know, this is like an exasperated thing, right? Blah, blah and like lean her over even more. Yeah, like shoulders will be over here. And the hands are like, blah. So you can be bring them together, lean her over. Going with the mouse is hard. And we really, I would have like a flat expression here, you know, like flat brows, blah. And then we can get back into this pose, which I think is fine. You could even come bring, bring the hands back together at this point. I can see there's like maybe like hinting at the the fingers being crossed over. Hmm. 
Uh, Veronica says, I just started doing a few acting shots for work, which some ended up working really well. I'm very new to acting, so just completely experimenting. It was actually blocking up and down rhythm, relating to the rhythm of the line delivery of the hips first loosely and then working outwards from that. Yeah, so like a layered approach, I like that. That's a, that's a good way to work. Uh, when I did that, I never even had to worry about the body accidentally dying. I have plenty of other stuff to worry about though, yeah. So like with acting, th then this is just like all the stuff that I've been learning over the last like 12 weeks, is like everything needs to be coming from a place of like, unless you're doing just like a study or whatever, just like kind of do like a take or an eye dart or something. Everything needs to be coming from a place of like these two main things. I like saved them from today's lecture. <laughs> what is the objective? And what are the obstacles and conflict? Like once you have those two main things, then you can like start to figure out who the character is and why they're doing what they're doing in this scene. And that'll inform your acting. Um, and if you don't have reference for this already, I would definitely try and shoot some reference because there's all sorts of like golden little things you can dig out of like what your face would be doing and how you like how this weight shift actually would work. Um, but yeah, like what what does this character actually want? <laughs> What do they want in this sequence? Are they do they want to tell the um Okay, you know what I just heard? Blah 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 They they want to tell the person that's taking the rotor that they are garbage humans? <laughs> Is that what they want to do in this scene? Because that's what she's doing, right? Um And then like what is getting in her way? And it's like a sitcom, so there's like there's there's like the um what I just heard? Blah 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 There's very little progression in this shot, which is like kind of like a bit a bit tricky, right? There's like hard it's hard to like come up with things that she's like having to go go through because like maybe the the objective isn't clear in the first place. I just heard in the case of this acting. But I think what you've got here is like okay for continuing on with for the purposes of this shot, right? It's not like we need to like rethink the entire thing, it's just go in there and film some reference and see what comes out. Um, okay. And try to get yourself in the mind of someone who's like trying to like neg their customers, you know, like I, I hate all my customers and these people are no different and um, and I just want them to know that I think they're terrible people. <laughs> I want my customer to know that I think that they're a terrible person is probably an okay want for this sequence. Um, you could also stagger some of this as well because she sort of just like comes out of this pose just like really, really neatly. Like what you could do is potentially have her be like, okay, you know what I just heard? Blah, blah, blah. Get rid of this like so what it, what I just heard idea and just like stay here for a little bit longer you know like hand on the pad you could be like mm hmm okay so what I just heard and then you go into blah 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 so then you just like you don't unfold straight away you like have a, a little bit more space before you unfold and like go into the the blah 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 and like you're trying to tell them that thing just it just like starts straight away so what I just heard feels very just like um Showing, showing the movement before you've even like got to the got to the emotion. Uh, shoot reference whenever I'm like, mm, I don't need reference for that. I always regret it. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. There's, there's so much good stuff that pin, that can be gleaned from, from from just getting up and putting the camera on, and it's so cheap as well. Like, there's literally like the cost is like if you don't have a little tripod. Like, I bought this little tripod for like ten bucks. Like this is what my reference cost me and my my phone of course but my, i need my phone anyway for everything else in my life and so like just putting this stuff down somewhere you can probably find an even cheaper one on amazon or whatever and um they're indestructible <laughs> it just fell off my chair and uh and then you can just like go you know you'd have to worry about finding like a proper tripod to put your phone or like a you know leaning your phone against something and having it fall down or if you've got a dedicated shooting room even better um and you know, the other thing that I found really helpful is like getting dressed up as the character is like helps you get into their mind a little bit more, you know, like in this case, you could put on like some straight black pants, uh, you know, have a button up shirt and tie your hair up or do whatever you need to do. 
actually hold a pad and a pen. Don't don't pretend to hold a pad and a pen. Um, and when you're doing the lines, actually try to say them out loud. That that also really helps. Um, yes, it is a really quick way to work through ideas. Like I said, it's so cheap. So yeah, you like get the camera out and you start filming. And um, before you do that though, like just just like pause for just a minute and just and just think like, what do I, what am I as this character? What do I want? What's my objective here? And then as you go into filming the scene, like be thinking about that. Have it in your mind. This is, I feel like these are like bare minimum things that we don't get taught. And that's what I was tweeting about earlier. Like <laughs> if, if you go into the sea and you just like start throwing your limbs around, like there's nothing there. There's no like relatability. There's no sincerity. There's nothing for people who are watching it to like cling on to as like, oh, this is actually a human character who's trying to say something and they have something that they're trying to get, you know? So just as like a bare minimum, before you start filming, think, what do I want? What, what's my objective? Um, and then try, and then try to get it. <laughs> you know, like that's what that's what it's there for. You might not get it. You know, like maybe in this scene, the objective is to let my customers know that I think they're terrible people. You might not succeed. You know, you might kind of only get halfway there, but at least you tried to do your objective. That, that gives you a character a reason to be in the scene. Uh, I had to animate something with a guitar recently. I don't have a guitar, but I do have a backpack with an extendable handle and masking tape. Yeah, very good. Uh, in one of our acting classes recently, we, um, there was like a character who I imagined was looking through some binoculars. I don't have binoculars, so I like made some out of like toilet paper and tape. <laughs> yeah. Just make, just make it, man. Like this, that's what we're here for. We're here to just make stuff. Make it up. Um. So yeah. Um. I think just like refining, figuring out what you, what this character is going to be doing in this scene. What do they want out of this scene? What are, what you know, while they're doing this, what's their objective? And getting in front of the camera and just filming just a few takes. You don't need to like stand there and do like hours and hours of takes. Just do like three or four. Uh, to have a look at them. See which things work for you, and then if nothing works, just take a little break and try again. Um, yeah, so we sort of just derailed a little bit there, talk about reference, but yeah, I just think it's so crucial for stuff like this because there's so many like things that you'll see in the reference that will help you um, with both the generation of ideas and also just like mechanically, like how did my shoulders rest after I come out of this pose? You know, like if the line is okay, you know what I just heard. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what I just heard, like there's some like tenseness in, in the shoulders here. What I just heard, blah, blah, blah. And she like releases the tension. You know, maybe that's what happens. I don't know. It, it's just all, all up to who this person, who this character is. Make, prop, make props look silly with props and then send a picture to your co-workers and make to establish what a ridiculous fun job we have. Exactly. It's so fun. I feel like, yeah, I was, I, I was talking or I was listening to someone talking about this earlier today. It's just like, you know, we could be, you know, like, what was the phrase he used? Digging ditches somewhere. But no, we're like sitting in front of cameras and like prancing around pretending to be people. And then like painstakingly moving puppets of those people around in a way that's believable and sincere and makes people feel things. Like, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's a pretty cool job. Anyway. Um, so then we had another piece that I wanted to look at real quick. Doing for this month's challenge, says Gamatron, or Gamaton32. I'm uh, mid-blocking now, and I'd like to know if there's anything that can be improved, timing, posing, camera, etc. How's everyone doing? You all good? Um, hope you're all having a chill night, by the way. I sort of started streaming and then not a lot of people came in and now there's a few people. I hope, I hope you're all good. Um, we are going to take a look at the uh, Puss in Boots trailer right after this. Oh, there's like a candle in my room now and I just want to blow it out. It's real stinky. Uh, I've got to fly away to some stuff. Have a nice rest of your day and have a lovely time zone. Everyone else in chat. Have a lovely time zone yourself, Veronica. Um, I'm keen to see what you've been working on as well, actually. Whatever. 
I ever get to see. You uh, you gotta you gotta show me. Have a good have a good rest of your night. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at this. Okay. Okay, so like um, in in filmmaking, there's this uh, idea of the thing called the line. Um, it's a concept. Crossing the line. It's called crossing the line. So, um, here's like just a real quick breakdown. So when you've got a scene with more than one character, and even if you've got a scene with one character, it really helps to be able to establish what's called the 180 rule or the line or crossing the line. Once you just establish in your shot what side of the line the people are on, then you should not cross over the line. So the example that uh, is probably most clear is this one. So you've got a shot uh, over the shoulder of this character um, and you can see the back of their head and the front of his other character's head. You can move the character anywhere on in this arc, but as soon as you cross over the 180 line, the characters swap sides and it's confusing for the audience. So this is just like you know, filmmaking 101, um, but a lot of people still mess this up and it's really easy to mess up because we have a virtual camera and you can move it anywhere and that's just how it is. Um, and so here's, an, here's another example. See, there's a red camera is just outside the line, so it's red. <laughs> so you can have a shot right like here where we've got two characters. Character A is on the left and character B is on the right. Yeah. Camera swings around. Okay, cool. Character A is still on the left. Character B is still on the right. No harm, no foul. We're all good. We come over here. Yep, cool. Character A is still on the left. Character B is still on the right. I think you know where I'm going with this, right? And then we do this camera move where we swing and we actually cross the line right here. Right here, boom, the line, we're crossing it. Crossing it hard. <laughs> and so um, we end up with this weird feeling of like things changing sides. And then you have this shot right here where we, where we uh, cut to a low angle to get the helmet rolling in. Um, and so like you've got this dynamic right where you've got like one character on one side of the screen and another character on the other side of the screen and this like stays like this for pretty much the whole the whole sequence you know like he sort of crosses over here a little bit um there's a little bit more crossing over right here they sort of come together but they're still on one side until you do this camera move and now characters have changed sides and like some people would argue that like it's okay to cross the line as long as you show that you're crossing the line you know like in this case we have a, a moving camera um, but I, I don't think I don't think it works in this case. I think it's um, probably by accident that this camera is moving this way. Um, so that's just like first thing. Um, we want to we want to rework this staging so that it um, better serves the um, it better serves the composition of the shot. Okay. So from there, I think you can probably yeah something about this. There's something in the in the way that these characters are moving that feels like kind of um, kind of not weak, but it feels unconvincing. You know, like we've got this character here, human character, moving away. But we don't get a sense that he's actually seen this thing move before it's, you know, he moves away and the thing gets up at the same, on the fr same frame. And so that feels like kind of confusing. And then you've got like the way he pulls the sword out. This pose where the fingers are out like this feels like he's, we don't know which way he's going to grab the sword. So that feels confusing. And then we just have this really like very side on, almost like orthographic dot of this guy and the sword like coming into the frame. 
it almost feels like this guy is threatening us at this point you know so yeah it, it just compositionally and like staging wise it just feels a bit confused and so like what, what i would suggest is actually just to have a static camera i would say pick a camera angle uh, and probably one like here just at the very start and have your whole shot happen in, in that ca camera angle doing all of this stuff where we're like moving into the frame and getting close behind the character and having this sword swipe by the center of the frame and then doing this line cross and then the head rolling i like the head rolling idea but you don't need to be over here for this head roll to work like you could have this character be on the right here swing the sword you know in this direction and knock the helmet off and you know if this was the original if this was the composition we were ending up with have the helmet land over here you know like with the eyes so yeah i would say it's keep it simple <laughs> I like how you've got this archway here, keeping this guy's silhouette nice and clean. That's a really nice thing. I'm not sure. I hope you did that on purpose. Um, but then we start we start to lose it right here when you know when he disappears into the rest of this noise. Um, so. just turn up the music a little bit I think it's a little quiet so yeah I'd say it's hard it's hard to like tell you where to go from here apart from just keep the camera still and, and maybe rejig a lot of this because once the camera is here a lot of this action is going to feel kind of off like having changed the camera angle this some of these poses might feel weird and read weird um but I think we want to we want to be able to see the characters a little bit more because right here it feels confusing. I don't see like this this between here and here feels like a huge spacing jump. And if you say you're in um, mid blocking, I would say we this is not quite mid blocking because there's no breakdowns here. You know we want we want a few more breakdowns, a few more in betweens to feel this anticipation. Because he brings the sword up, we don't see like how he brings the sword up. It just is up. And similarly, when it comes down, there's one breakdown, but we don't really feel the impact of this sword landing, you know? Like, we really want to feel the sword come down and have, like, he, like, jostles his whole body. And this guy just moves out of the way, which we can still do from this camera angle, by the way. Um, this feels a bit off, just because... Maybe it's because of this interpenetration here, but it's also because it doesn't feel like there's actually a force acting on him. It just feels as though he's moving back without a reason to move back. And you know, maybe part of it is that, see how like right here, the arms are like, they feel closer to the body right here. And then here, they feel further away. So it feels like he's actually pushing his own body away. I think that should be reversed. I think you should start here and then go to here. So it's like, the, he's like, gaining on the pressure like he can't hold his arms out because of all of the strength and weight from this big knight character is like pushing the sword down against him so yeah just the believability of this this interaction feels kind of hard hard to pass and then this swing that we do also feels like it's missing it just sort of swims through these poses you know we miss half of the anticipation because we're swinging the camera around, so keeping the camera still will fix that, but I still think there's kind of some weirdness going on with the way that the body just sort of moves through the frame. It doesn't feel like he's like... Or like... It feels like he's just going forward and like stirring a pot or something, like a big cauldron. We need to feel the like, get ready, and then... Baseball bat is kind of some reference you could look at, but this is the reference that I think you could film yourself um, just to get exactly what you need. Yeah, but just a lot of this action feels as though it doesn't it just doesn't feel grounded and doesn't have a um, doesn't have much of a purpose, you know. Like the stakes don't feel high for this guy. <laughs> 
he's get, he's you know he's wandering through a cave he's like ready to draw his sword at any time and then he's surprised by this character that sort of just levitates up out of the ground and i think part of the reason why this is like a hard read for me to be like oh he got surprised didn't read the first few times that i watched it is because it feels like this guy's just resting it doesn't feel like he's you know like a, a set of armor that's just like posed you know like ornately or even like he's dead like if if the eyes were out you know like if you had this and like this color down here was not on you know like this this feels like life to me it was alive and there's like lights coming out of things um and then you know like the light comes on like just that just that should be enough to make him go whoa and then like he get comes up the other thing as well that I noticed is the way that he gets up, he just sort of like rises up off the ground as if by magnets. It almost feels like he is pulling him, <laughs> which is quite strange. So we probably want to come up with a more interesting solution for how this guy gets up off the ground, you know, like does he stick his sword in the ground and then like that's what he uses to lift himself up with? Or if he is getting like magnet or uh, magically lifted up, we need to feel it more like um you know part of him moves before another part so like his head is staying still but his hips are moving up and then like the rest of his body rises as it comes up into that final pose or if it's the head getting pulled up the head moves first from the rest of the like there's just like mechanics here that don't feel like they're being sold to me they just feel like we're just translating this puppet through space um And I like the way the eyes like flickering on the ground here. I can tell that there's like some cool idea here. Um, but what I would really love to see is just the eyes go out again. <laughs> you know, like we've got, we had the eyes off at the start and then they're off at the end. It's like a nice little bookend. Just like turn them off. And then he goes to sleep. This is cool though. I like what you're doing here. This pose is kind of, it's kind of neat. I would potentially lower this arm, oops, Just lower this arm a little bit down and then you can get more of like a rounded grip on the front of the sword. Right now it kind of feels like he's gripping the sword with just his fingertips. Like when you hold, when you hold something, there's like, let me see if I can find something that is even vaguely sword shaped, if not. Um, maybe this candle, yeah. So like you don't normally see like this when you are uh, where's my camera when someone's holding a sword you know like this feels kind of like we're not actually gripping it what you normally see is like this right you get like a nice flat shape against the back of the palm you get like maybe a couple of knuckles po poking out so yeah it's some bring the arm down having a, a bit more of like a flat shape on the front of the knuckles and that also gives you room to just like have the sword at a slightly different angle. Let me straight out like that. Lift the head up a little more. And have him like really looking down his nose and straighten his legs out just, just a touch. These are all things that I, I would do if I was in this scene. <laughs> right? So yeah. And this is all probably useless because we're gonna if, if you take that first note of like staying on this camera angle you can, you can probably still do it actually you just have to flip it i hope that's helpful um and also just give some space to breathe you know like we see this guy he reacts we have a moment when the, the eyes are on and he sees him just a few frames just a little bit you just need like a, a little bit of a pause there to like read that reaction and then he levitates and as he's levitating not on the exact same frame but as he's coming up this guy moves out of the way to give him space right now it feels like they're just moving on the exact same frames he draws the sword what would also be neat is as he jumps back he draws the sword so it's like instead of jump back draw sword it's like jump back and draw sword so you get like just that kind of compound motion He's, this is just like a trained swordsman. It, feel, it feels more like official, I guess. Yeah. 
yeah we, we lose a lot of like momentum and whatever momentum we had right here is just lost as soon as we move this camera all of the swing loses all, all of its power also you've got like a pretty challenging task right here you know you've got like Okay, you've got the helmet landing, which is like pretty complicated because it's like a heavy object and it's got this big furry thing on the end of it. So that's like challenging, right? And then even more challenging is you've got like a big mechanical suit that has like now like lost power. It needs to like fall over and like plunk onto the ground in like an interesting way and like a believable way. So that's going to be a big challenge. But that's all stuff to think about later on down the road. So yeah, let's uh, let's move on. Let's let's take a look at this Puss in Boots trailer. This is, why, this is why we're here. We're, how, well, we're nearly an hour. <laughs> Shit. Whoopsie. Pause the music. Let's go. I am known by many names. The Stabby Tabby. The Macho Gato. The Little Whisperer. I am Pussy Boots. Holy Frijoles. You, lunch me. And the rest of you play double time. Hey, Giant! Yeah! Hey, you wanna see something cool? Gracias, you've been great! Get home safely! Good night! You're still here? Okay, okay, one more number. I call this one, the legend will never die. I have bad news. You died. Doctor. Relax, I am pussy boots. I have nine lives. And how many times have you died already? Uh, uh I am not really a math guy. Hola, senorita. Do you like gazpacho? Does this have shellfish in it? A god always lands on his feet. Watch! Watch! Ha. Watch! <laughs> and then there was the giant today. So what is that? Like, uh, a four? That makes eight, Puss. What do you wish to do with your last life? When you only have one life, that's what makes it special. Drive, perro! Fear me if you dare. Goldilocks and the Three Bears crime family. You're supposed to be dead. Eh. It never fails. <gasps> Whenever I team up with you, things go wrong. Trust me. You gotta trust him. Look at those eyes. You call that cute? <gasps> and with the paws, it's all so cute. <sighs> You're gonna give yourself a hernia. Yeah. Okay. I am no. So, like, this trailer does a lot of cool stuff, but then it also, like, I think it kind of falls into some cliche sort of, you know, weird parts, especially towards the end when they're doing all of this stuff. Like, this is just like. It's like a cliche of a cliche that they invented, and so it's like kind of hard to kind of hard to pass. But the stuff that I really like is all this stuff at the start, like all of this 3D effects on the screen going on. Um, yeah, all these 2 2D effects, really cool. I think the milk is like kind of a, a weird angle because it looks so foamy. So like, I get that this is like to be like supposed to be like a pour a beer, but yeah, it's um feels weird. Feels weird to me. I am pushing boot. Holy! I'm just holding. Sorry, close my door.
Um, so yeah, stuff, stuff that I do really like is this creature is really cool. This shot is really cool actually, everyone running out of the building, which I didn't catch on the first viewing. The way he like lifts the sides of the building off and it sort of doesn't all come away in one piece is really neat. This like actual heavy lit object lift feels good too. It's a bit of a weird cut, I know it's a trailer, but I, I see this happen, like we have, he lifts, he's already lifted the roof, we see the guy here, and then in the following shot, he's like lifting it again. So maybe he like lifted this part up and put it back down, or maybe he was on the other side, but which is why this big hole is missing, I don't know, it's just <laughs> trailer logic. Uh, but yeah, this lift feels really cool, you get like some nice uh, high frequency like shoulder shuttery motion right here. And then he lifts with his his legs, which is really cool. Get this, and then he comes back down. Um, yeah, really fun. Bounce in bouncing ball. Which arcs really nicely. I have no idea how he like stays in this pose. <laughs> you know, like he lands and he's like defying gravity right here. Where is it? Here. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. He just like stays straight at this angle. Um, but we believe it, you know, like there's a, there's no moment here where we're like, how is he at that angle for so long? We just, we just believe it. And then there's some really cool stuff through here, which they're like taking some Sony books out of Sony playbook and maybe a little bit of Arcane, where we've got a running on twos. So right here, look at this really pushed, stretched cat pose. Keep up in the air. And then the pose change is like here to here. Really nice. Looks like he's also pretty squashed up in here. But the cape is still coming down, so we, we, we read that. And then, look at this. Very cool. One, two, 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 two. Yeah, we're on twos. Camera's on ones. And we're sort of uh, crawling up the side of the building. And out here as well, we're doing a little bit more of this. Although it's not all on twos. Cool, you've got like this, which is straight out of Arcane, this sort of like jagged smear shape. Really nice, dynamic, fill the frame with the character thing going on here. Really cool huge shapes and then we use this movement to get across the other side of the screen there's some nice smearing going on uh, yeah some cool 2d effects happening here as well these sort of like cut out feeling shapes very spider-verse actually and these action lines and uh yeah even some like what is this posterized feeling stuff right here, some speckly sort of dust. Feels nicely layered. They've done a really nice job of like keeping things, keeping the elements separate, but you know, having them interact with one another right here through like, uh, puss jumping through the smoke. Um, and what's really nice is like, as puss goes from down here, where we're sort of in the dark, there's a little bit of rim light down here. Uh, but as he hits up here, we get really like almost like a flare lighting hitting the back of him. Super strong arched silhouette. One leg up, one leg down. And one thing that's really important that I've talked about a lot is like don't lose the thingness of the thing, you know, like the spiderness of the spider, in this case, the catness of the cat. We even though we're doing some pretty crazy poses, we're still like reading this as like a cat. So all through this sequence back here, let's go back and take a look. Yeah, all through here. You know, like we're, we're running, but we're running on all fours. 
who were on all, who were on twos. This feels actually a little bit human-like <laughs> now that I see this pose. But right here, we sort of forgive ourselves and say, uh, you know what, we actually are a cat, and we get this like super cat-like pose. Really nice. This is like insane to me. This spinning camera, spinning whatever this is, is behind his face is. This is like hypnotizing. And some more 2D effects. He jumps out of the way of the bell. You've got a couple of really fast, nice cuts, which when you play it back, read beautifully. But like you can see how quick these cuts are. You've got this is like a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten frame shot where the bell has to come through and smack him in the head, and you get the ripples out from the bell. Which is like a kind of a crazy concept, like seeing the sound. And then the next shot where we see the, the beast coming down, that's really cool as well. Again, some nice, like I really like this cutout paper feeling vibe that we're getting here, mixed in with some more traditional feeling effects, um, which we've seen done in the past as well now a couple of times. I can't remember exactly where, but this, you know, traditional flowy smoke mixed in. Actually, no, it was in Apex. I saw it in Apex, mixed in with the, um, the 2D cutout effects. Actually works really nicely. Where did he get this thing from? Where was this, this object? He comes back out here, no guitar, and then all of a sudden, guitar. This is a cool shot. You get like a heap of characters reacting. Um, and this is always, this is like Kurosawa, you know, like having a heap of characters doing the same thing is like sometimes more powerful than having just one character do the, do the acting. And so you read like <gasps> the crowd going gasping. Uh, there's a nice transition right here where we have a character acting sad, antic down, and it's like not all at once, you know, like we do the brows, the mouth is the same, the mouth starts to change, and then everything comes out happy. Puts his boots back on, which is very iconic. I love all this stuff back here, like these <laughs> medical illustrations. And the, even this feels kind of arcane-ish. Or So, you know, like we're starting to see this happen, you know, like 2D effects and like 2D painted backgrounds. The arcane effect has begun. Even this guy's paint, the, this texture on his skin feels a little bit 2D-ish. Um, like these objects, these background objects, feeling like there's someone who's drawn on them like painted them in like this feeling is starting to crop up the, this motif this um visual theme is starting to pop up more and more um i even felt back through here that it felt all like these shots these lines and the way that the texture on the edge of the character feels and this whole frame feels like almost like a 2d animated thing uh it's, it's also got some on twos elements i think yeah like right here we're holding this holding this pose over two frames Really like that. The way he tucks the sword in feels very badass. You know, like this is a little bit like, uh, oh, there's a little bit of a continuity thing. Again, probably just an edit thing, but we end in this pose when before we were in this pose uh, and twisted back, you know? Um, But yeah, in that last the student shot or the um the the junior shot of the the blocking that they had when the um when the character had like you know swung the the sword and knocked the knight's head off and like you could do something where he like tucks the sword back in. Hello, Empress. How you doing? Let me put my music back on. Oops. Hello, music. There it is. <laughs> I love the enthusiasm on that, uh, like, hello. You love Puss in Boots? I've never, I've never seen them. Are they good? Are they good movies? 
This trailer looks fun though. I really like some of the stuff they're doing in here. Very, um, very arty feeling. That's really cool. Yeah, there's just, I could just relive this moment over and over again. The way that the, um, the vertical lines of the, you know, whatever the bell is or whatever's happened at the top of the character's head, where is it right here? These elements kind of all point upwards at an angle when he lands is really uh, this. Such a quick shot. You get like some really nice, you know, we're flowing uh, against the angle of what the character is at the point and you get really nice contrast build up in just such a short shot. How's things been though, Empress? You've been streaming? And yes, there is a new Puss in Boots movie coming out. This is the trailer for it. We just watched it. Looks looks kind of good. Um, and then I also really like the way this bell... Like, this is like preservation of motion, you know? Like, you've got the character comes to like, stop, but the bell is like, not stuck to the character. It's like, on a hinge. And so preservation of motion is just like, ah, oh, bell keeps moving. And then you've also got the little, whatever it is, the dingle dangle inside the bell, and that moves at a different speed as well, you know? Like, it catches up. Bell hits its apex, dingle dangle hits its apex. I love you and leave you, gotta luck, have din dins, yeah, no worries. I probably won't be going for too much longer, but enjoy your dinner and uh, I'll catch you, catch you later. I really like, um, I mean, let's see here. I was gonna point it out before, but the way he stretches into poses is really nice, like this starts here you know like this is pretty pushed already but then like as the shot goes on he just continues to build and build and build you know just like this is a moving hole but he's just like plussing the pose more and more as the shot goes on you know and that that in itself that like arching of the back thing feels kind of on point for a cat so that's neat The bell crushes him. Let's just frame through and see what we see here. It comes down so fast. Yeah, there's no... <laughs> I kind of would have liked to have had, you know, like, wait, this hat, hat is here. You have, like, a frame where you see just, like, the hat and maybe, like, the eyes or whatever. And, like, under the elbow and under the elbow or something, you know, just, like, the indication that he's actually getting squashed. I know, a kid's movie or whatever. There was probably a revision that had it in it, but just, you know, not, not seeing any impact from the, the belt. It's one frame, but just, just a little bit of a hint, you know, would be nice. And this is such a great instance of like heavy object hitting something and, and, and just like completely coming to a standstill. And then we go through this little um, montage, I guess you could call it. And then I like, see this lady, the eyes, and then you get these like neat little death cards, I guess you could call them, of him like, oh, he died by a bull here. And he died by seafood. It's a really nice like continuation of motion or like mirroring of motion. You know, you've got like the, um, the splash going up right here as Puss goes up. And then as the splash comes down, Puss also goes down. So you get like these things like falling at the same rate, which is really cool to see. And again, like this 2D, like sketchy background, this feels such so much just like a piece of key art. The, um, the there's like some snow, oh, hang on some snow on these mountains that just looks like brush strokes that are getting just like translated over. It's so simple, but it just like gives you everything you, you need to know. He's like swole here for some reason. <laughs> like look at his giant cat arms. Some 
of these are really fast. Look at this Spider-Verse Spider ass shot right here. The, the 2D drawn on um, explosion. A little bit of a reference right here to that dog painting. Very nice. This is cool because like we, we don't actually see him get killed here, but this death card gives you like, it's like in the exact same point in the frame as well, like right in the middle. You don't even, you don't read that this doesn't happen because the card shows you that it happened. It's very, very cool. Nice combination of things. Hmm, again, just the backgrounds. Oh, Dipney, thank you for the follow. Yeah, just like they've they've really done themselves some interesting arcane like moves right here with having a lot of this stuff be extremely 2D or extremely 2D feeling. I actually really don't like the way that this cat looks. <laughs> uh feels a little bit like the Whiskers cat from the like the Whiskers ads. She feels a little bit, I don't know, maybe it's the color in the eyes. Feels too saturated or something. This big dog though looks really cool. Look at the eyes, it's like flashing. Really nice spinning the blades. You get some extra like smearing going on right here. It's like, not true like blade spinning you know he's not like moving his fingers he just goes like this and the blade spins around in his hands but it works and then there's a really nice little bit of compression that happens at the end here like stretch in the neck and in the head and then comes down and squishes and compresses right here you can see the, the nose drag behind ever so slightly really cool stuff Again, see these blue eyes? Something something about this just hits me the wrong way. Yeah, look, we're not going to talk about this. <laughs> it's so cliche. I hate this. There is a nice bit of, bit of contact right here, which I like, but... I like the sparks and the blades when he's scratching them on the floor. Yeah, let's go have a look. Yeah, good good eye, Dipney. I really like that. They're sort of like you get like a nice um like it's blown out because it's so white and so like the camera doesn't quite catch it. Um the sparks don't feel like you know stock sparks, they feel like they're actually drawn in there. And they do that thing where they kind of feel like um, damp, you know, there's like a dampness to the sparks. I don't really know any other way to describe it. But they're, they're like dense, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And some really nice detail here, like look at the way this material is getting rendered out on this, the end of this sword. It's not strictly animation. The pose is really cool though, like this. He's leaned, leaned back into his chest with his head and he's all squashed up, squashed up on this one side. The shoulder getting pulled up. Heaps of directionality, obviously, because of the sword and the lines, but it's being like supported by the angle of the hat, the angle of the head. Everything in this pose is like pointing in one direction. It's like a big arrow. Really cool stuff. Let's get through this. And then there's this weird. I I don't know what's going on with this this creature. This, he feels like he's unlit or something. Something is weird. The way the fur is looking on screen. You know, like they'll see how this fur has like multiple layers. You've got like the, the regular flat fur, and then you've got like these little highlights. This character's fur kind of feels also kind of thick. But then you've got this guy, and he feels like it's not quite right. I, I, I do think we lose a little bit of the of the cat that idea that I always talk about like the thingness of the thing in this moment right here when this character does this line you're gonna give yourself a hernia you're gonna give yourself a hernia like this doesn't feel this is very human feeling to me I, I guess there's like I, I I'm seeing these films maybe they do a lot of human like acting but you 
yourself a heart. Yeah, let's see. Something about the thumbs as well feels kind of creepy to me. I'm not sure. The fingers feel really long. <laughs> yeah, those are those are my critiques. Otherwise, I really like a lot of the stuff they're doing here. Some of the 2D stuff, some of the um, the on twos business is really nice. All of this through here was really surprising. Um, this doesn't read though. Like this big swing right here. Where is it? He's about to swing the bell. Maybe in the movie it reads because we see the bell go up. But right here, all we see is this. We don't see, you know, like if this continued over here and like the bell was over here or whatever. I feel like this would, you would get a little bit more impact, you know, like to see the bell here. You know? Bell. where my drawings were but yeah that's the idea you know because then when the bell does hit you get to like read it read it a little more maybe it just didn't fit on screen yeah it, it, like it, it is up in the air here you know and, and again like it is a trailer so there's probably edits going on or whatever but yeah really cool stuff this i really like that jump across the screen this is an example of crossing the line but the character actually crosses the line and we lose the um, other guy right here over like a couple of frames. So that's not too bad. You know, like character A is on the left, character B is on the right. We cross the line here. I only mentioned that because we were talking about crossing the line before in that student's work. Anyway, um, yeah, it was really cool. It was really fun. I, I probably spoke for way too long about the student and student reviews, the um, Agora community feedback channel review stuff. But um, just in time, the music is finished. Um, good chats, everyone. Good chats. <laughs>